Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're tackling acute pancreatitis. So let's jump right in with our practice question to get things going. Remember, as always, we will come back to the correct answer here at the end. But to start, the nurse is admitting a client newly diagnosed with acute pancreatitis. They should anticipate a prescription for which medication? We have A, a 3% saline infusion, B, fentanyl, C, diphenhoxylate atropine, or D, sucrophate. So let's dive into some quick anatomy. As always, this is the basis for everything. So the pancreas, it is a long, flat gland kind of tucked behind the stomach. It's got a double life, okay? It's half digestive system, half endocrine system. And we'll actually talk more about endocrine in next week's episodes on diabetes. But for today, let's really focus in on what it does exocrine, okay? Its job is to produce digestive enzymes, amylase, lipase, trypsin, these guys are breaking down the things we eat. So that amylase breaks down carbs. That lipase is breaking down fats. And that trypsin is breaking down proteins. So I eat my chicken sandwich. That goes in my stomach. It gets moved into the small intestine. And boom, the pancreas releases these enzymes. So we break down our carbs, fats, and protein. But here is the key thing. Those digestive enzymes, they are supposed to be inactive until they reach the small intestine. All right, kind of like we've got a set of knives safely wrapped up in a box. We don't take them out until it's time to cook and chop up those veggies. In pancreatitis, we're taking the knives out way too early and everything gets cut up. Those enzymes get activated while they're still inside the pancreas. And instead of digesting your dinner, they start digesting the pancreas itself. So pretty nasty. The pancreas is basically trying to eat itself alive. That leads to the inflammation, the itis in pancreatitis. Inflamed, swollen, and incredibly painful. That's really what we're going to focus in on here. What is behind this? Why is this going on? We have two top offenders, either gallstones or alcohol use. So first, gallstones, they can actually go and block that pancreatic duct. So the door is just like jammed closed and those enzymes can't actually get out, therefore activated in the pancreas, eating it alive. Now with alcohol, that irritates the pancreatic tissue directly and messes with enzyme secretion. So instead of being secreted correctly, they get activated inside. Again, we're eating the pancreas. So how does this manifest? Let's talk about symptoms because they are very specific. Acute pancreatitis, that pain is described as sudden, epigastric, and radiating to the back. Okay, if you remember anything, I want you to remember where the pain radiates. The NCLEX loves to test on this. Pancreas pain radiating to the back. This is a relentless pain, like not something you're just going to sleep off. It brings about nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension. They'll become febrile and tachycardic. And oftentimes their bowel sounds are slowed down or hypoactive. And the position you'll often find our client in is kind of leaning forward or on their side curling into that fetal position. They're trying to get into a position that takes pressure off of that inflamed pancreas. Okay, those are all early signs. As it progresses, we can start to see two things, colons and gray Turner signs. Colon sign is some bluish discoloration around the belly button, and then gray Turner is bruising on the flanks. Basically what's happening with both of these is that we have bleeding in that retroperitoneal or kind of back abdomen space. Blood is pooling up there. That's where we get the bruising around the umbilicus, colon sign, bruising along the flanks, gray Turner sign. And if we're seeing colons or gray Turners, we know this is getting serious. So what can we do about this? Pancreas is eating itself, manifesting with these intense pains, radiating to the back, colon, gray Turners. This is obviously a mess. 
Our priority, though, is treating the pain. Pain is a top priority in pancreatitis. This is not just a little tummy ache. This is organ-level, deep-seated, inflammation-driven pain. So we need to bring out the big guns. IV opioids like fentanyl, hydromorphone, morphine, they are typically brought out to control the pain. Sometimes we use one of those PCA pumps. That helps the client better manage their pain, keeps them really safe. The other thing, we got to treat their pain, but that's not going to fix the actual problem, right? To fix the problem, we got to let that pancreas rest. So they're about to go totally NPO. We cannot be giving them anything into the gut because that will activate the pancreas and we will have more enzymes self-digesting that pancreas. So that's a little on the physiology. Now you understand why it hurts so much, what's going on. Let's actually walk through a case where we will see those signs and symptoms and see how to treat them. So the case that pops into my mind is a 45-year-old man, give or take. That was around about his age. But it was when I was triaging in the emergency department, okay? I got pulled back in my safe little peds bubble back there up to triage, super busy shift, So this man came in via ambulance. His chief complaint was severe abdominal pain, which, of course, walking into the ED, that can mean so many different things. First assessment of him, he does not look so hot. He is pale. He is sweaty, curled up in the fetal position, holding his belly. I ask, hey, where does it hurt? And he points right to the center of his belly, so that upper gastric pain. My next question Okay, is the pain spreading anywhere? I don't usually use the word radiate because some people don't totally get that. Is that pain spreading anywhere else? And he points to his back and says, it feels like someone lit a fire on me. So I know this is intense. I can see, even without getting his vital signs, that this pain is bad. Of course, we throw him on the monitor. He's tacky. His BP is a little soft, 90s over 60. He's breathing quick. I palpate his belly like a little bit. He will barely let me touch him, but his belly is really distended. I'm not really hearing bowel sounds. He's nauseous. He had a couple of bouts of bilious emesis. So right away, we've got these symptoms lining up with the anatomy we just talked about. Epigastric pain radiating to the back. We know that that is where that pancreas sits. It's inflamed. It's putting pressure Now, I also want to talk about the abdominal distension. That is a huge, huge problem when we're dealing with pancreatitis. His belly is really big. We have a lot of fluid pulling in the belly. He is third spacing, and that is why I saw that soft blood pressure. Instead of that fluid being intravascular in his veins, it is shifting into the belly, causing that abdominal distension, that ascites, and making the blood pressure lower because not enough fluid is left in those veins, okay? So that is typical for vital signs and presentation for acute pancreatitis. Now, of course, we're sending off labs. We pull a rainbow, send all the things off. Amylase, lipase, these are the big labs you want to be getting in pancreatitis. You're going to get other things like a CBC to see the white count. That's going to be up, definitely indicating inflammation. But the amylase and the lipase levels are the differentiators. You know, those should be in the gut, in the pancreas, the intestine, breaking down our food. So if we get high levels of them out in the blood, then we can pretty confidently say that that pancreas is angry. Those enzymes are not where they're supposed to be. They are digesting the pancreas, causing the inflammation. That's why we see the white count up. So once we've got those labs back, that diagnosis, what do we actually do about it? Remember we said we've got to control that pain. This man is suffering. So IV fentanyl is what was ordered in this case. They did not actually put him on a PCA in the emergency department. I suspect that potentially once he got transferred up to the floor that that could have been a pain control option. But the key here, the takeaway I want you guys to have is that you're not holding back on pain meds. You are treating that aggressive organ level inflammatory pain IV opioids are typically used in pancreatitis. Okay, next priority, I had to get this man some fluids because his blood pressure was going a little soft on me. 90s over 60s, it's not an emergency, but I don't love it. Why was that BP soft? 
because he was dry intravascularly, fluid was shifting into the abdominal cavity. Giving those fluids, we're trying to counter the third spacing happening due to all the inflammation. So pancreas inflamed because enzymes are eating it up. Body pulls fluid into the abdominal cavity. That's why we got that distended belly. But we don't have that fluid in our blood vessels. It moved from our blood vessels to our belly. Dry intravascularly, low blood pressure. So I need to fluid resuscitate. In the ED, we did normal saline. Just hung a liter bag. That is a very typical ED. I'm going to titrate that to maintenance fluids once we get him up to the floor. But normal saline, very typical there. Third priority, we got to get this man NPO. And when I say NPO, I really mean it. Like, do not even give him ice chips because we do not want to stimulate the pancreas. Anything going into the belly is going to tell the pancreas, hey, I've got food to digest, release some enzymes, send me that lipase, that trypsin, that amylase. And we do not want that. We want those enzymes turning off so that that pancreas isn't auto-digested and can actually rest. So to do that, I dropped an NG tube and aspirated all the contents in his belly. We are decompressing the stomach. Get rid of that vomiting and just empty it out. And then again, nothing in the belly. So for nutrition, and I didn't start this in the ED, this would have happened up on the floor. We need to get him started on TPN, total parenteral nutrition. Remember, parenteral means around the gut. We're given that nutrition in the veins. We do not put any nutrition into the gut. And with that being said, as you probably can guess, this can lead to some fluid and electrolyte imbalances. So we got to keep a close eye on that. We drew a CMP as part of our initial labs. So we're getting a look at calcium, potassium, magnesium. Those are the big three you got to really keep a close eye on and supplement accordingly depending on what is low. Now, medication-wise, remember I already said I'm giving him that normal saline. We're fluid resuscitating. I don't want anything in the gut. The other thing I can do to help with that is a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor. This is something like omeprazole. It's going to reduce gastric acid secretion so that we minimize irritation to the pancreas. Again, keeping him NPO, reducing that irritation, and letting the pancreas rest is how we will eventually see resolution of the acute pancreatitis and we'll be able to wean off of those pain meds since we don't have that massive inflammatory pain anymore. All right, so key takeaway here. Acute pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas. Enzymes are being released in the pancreas itself. It is auto-digesting. So everything we do is about interrupting that process, keeping them stable, and giving that pancreas time to calm down. And with that being said, let's circle it on back to our practice question to see if you guys now know the answer and why. So again, the nurse is admitting a new client with acute pancreatitis, and they should anticipate a prescription for which med. We have A, a 3% saline infusion, B, fentanyl, C, diphenhoxylate atropine, or D, sucralfate. So think it through for a sec, and when you're ready, scream that answer out loud. Say it in your car, jot it down in your notebook if you're in the library. What is the right answer? What med do you anticipate? It's B, that fentanyl. Remember, Acute pancreatitis hurts an awful lot. Intense epigastric pain radiating to the back. Adequate pain control is key in the management of pancreatitis. So opioids is what we typically use. Now, A, if you chose A, you were thinking of that normal saline infusion that I started for fluid resuscitation. 3% saline is hypertonic, not an isotonic fluid like normal saline. Normal saline is 0.9% normal saline. And that is going to go in the vessels, stay in the vessels, and help fluid resuscitate this client that is very dry intravascularly. 3% saline, that hypertonic, no, 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 not indicated. All right, choice C, that diphenhoxylate atramine. That's an anti-diarrheal. No involvement there with pancreatitis. 
And choice D, sucral fate. If you picked sucral fate, you were probably thinking about that PPI, such as a meprazole. Sucral fate, however, is a gastric fortifying medication. By that, I mean it kind of coats the belly so that we coat ulcers and they are not eroded as much. We do not use sucral fate in acute pancreatitis. No indication there. That PPI, that proton pump inhibitor, that would be used because it turns down how much gastric acid is produced. So again, key takeaway, we are trying to interrupt the process of the pancreas eating itself alive, okay? So put them NPO, give that PPI to turn down how much stomach acid we make, give them fluids to resuscitate, and most importantly, treat that pain. This is an intense pain that we are not holding back on. Right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered on demand video lectures, high yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.